Hello, this is Pastor Steven Anderson from Faith Forward Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. And today I want to teach you your first Greek Bible verse. And this is probably the most famous Bible verse from the Greek New Testament, which is John 1.1. What we know in English as, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So hopefully you've got your uh, Greek New Testament, uh, your Textus Receptus. The best place to get it is from the Trinitarian Bible Society. Just Google Trinitarian Bible Society. You can order it for, for 10 or 12 bucks from them. And that'll be the exact Greek text underlying the King James Bible. So that way what you'll have in your Greek New Testament will be identical to what you have in your English King James Bible. There won't be any discrepancies or, or corruption. So you want to get a, a Textus Receptus. And here's the verse, John 1.1. 1, 1. And so we're going to go through this in Greek and I'm going to explain it. Now, hopefully you already know the alphabet and understand that. But I'm going to first start by just explaining some of these other little markings that you may or may not be able to see on the board here. Uh, first of all, any word that starts with a vowel, okay, it's going to have like a little apostrophe up above it. And sometimes it's facing one way and sometimes it's facing the other way, okay. That is called the breathing marks. Now, modern Greek speakers do not pronounce those. So the good news is you can pretty much just ignore those, okay, because, you know, I, I believe that we should probably use modern Greek pronunciation. That's all I use, and so that's what I'm teaching. But these little commas that either go forward or backward up above the words that start with a vowel, those are breathing marks that in modern Greek uh, pronunciation we're going to ignore those. So that's the good news. But then what you'll also see is accent marks, okay? Some of those accent marks look like typically what we think of an accent mark like in Spanish, either going forward or backwards. And then some of them look sort of like the Spanish tilde above uh, this letter, for example. And those accent marks, they tell us where to put the stress on a word, where to put the accent, uh, which syllable to accent when we pronounce that word. So here's how this verse is going to be pronounced. Anarchi in ologos. Whoops, forgot a letter here. And are he in ologos, ke ologos in pros ton theon, ke theos in ologos. Okay? So you notice I'm putting the stress or the accent on the accented syllables. En are he. Okay? So the accent is on the last syllable in this word, are he. And are he in ologos. And notice in logos, I'm putting the stress on the first syllable, because that's where the accent mark is. And are he in ologos, ke ologos in pros ton theon. So notice, the word for God, theon, the accent is on the second syllable, that's where the mark is. Ton theon, ke theos in ologos. So let me just explain uh, the words here and what they mean. En are he is in the beginning. Okay, now this is a pretty easy word to learn, archi, because we have the word archaeology. And what is archaeology? You know, they're digging up things that are very old. You could say it's the study of beginnings, okay? Archaeology. So, archi means beginning. Pretty easy word. En archi, in the beginning. In ologos, was the word. This O here is the word the, okay? So, en arhi in ologos, in the beginning was the word. Ke o logos, ke means and, ke o logos, and the word, in pros ton theon. In means was, pros in this context means with, ton theon is the God. Okay, sometimes in Greek, the word the will occur in front of God in places where we wouldn't put it in English. You know, it's just a difference between English and Greek. We don't say the God uh, very often, but in Greek, sometimes they use the word the differently than we use the word Greek in English. So it's keologos uh, in proston theon. And again, we're using modern Greek pronunciation. Keologos uh, in proston theon means, and the word was with. God, or the God, ton theon, okay? And then the last phrase here says, ke theos, and God, in o logos, was the word. Now, if you remember, in English, 
This says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now you'll notice that in the Greek New Testament it says, and God was the Word. Now don't let that confuse you or bother you and say, oh, it's different in the Greek. It's not different. It's only different to those who don't understand the language. You know, people who don't know Greek, but then they try to look at the Greek New Testament and try to find places where they can correct or change the King James. You know, it's just that they don't understand the language. And let me just explain to you something about Greek. In Greek, the word order is not the same as it is in English. You know, in English, the word order is very important. You know, subject, verb, direct object. Well, in Greek, because of the way the language is inflected, you can move things around and get the exact same meaning. You know, you can basically, instead of saying, you know, for example, I hit the ball, you could say, you know, the ball hit I. And, but, but, but you don't mean that the ball's hitting you. You know, the way the words are inflected in Greek, you're still saying I hit the ball, you're just putting it in a different word order. So the word order is a lot less rigid in Greek. You know, things can be moved around. So basically what I'm trying to say is that saying que uh, theos in ologos is not any different at all from saying, you know, que ologos in otheos. I mean, it's not really any different. I mean, you're just putting it in a different order. Doesn't really matter. Okay? So uh, it's saying the exact same thing that the word was with God and that the word was God. Okay? So again, and are he in ologos, que ologos in pros ton theon, que theos in O logos. Okay, is how that's going to be pronounced. So this is a good verse to memorize, probably the most famous uh, verse in the Greek New Testament. So we talked about the word archi, and we talked about the word logos means the word. Okay, uh, pretty famous words. Now, you'll notice that with the word theos here, theos means God. Now, theos should remind you of the word theology for example. So this is another one that's pretty easy because we derive our word theology from theos. But you'll notice that these two words have a slight difference here, okay? Uh, theos ends in an S, theon ends in an N. They both mean God, but the reason why this one ends in an S and this one ends in an N, or ni, as we would say it in Greek, is that this one right here is in the nominative case and this one right here is in the accusative case. Now you say, what in the world does that mean? Nominative case, accusative case? Well, in English, we have things that are the subject of a sentence, and then we have things that are the direct object of a sentence. But for us, that word would not change, okay? For example, if I wanted to use my example from earlier, you know, I hit the ball, okay? In this sentence, I would be the subject, hit would be the verb, and then the ball is the direct object. Now, if I wanted to say the ball went over the fence, well now ball is the subject of the sentence, right? But it's still ball, it doesn't change. You know, whether I'm hitting the ball and it's the object, or whether the ball is going over the fence, then the ball is the subject of that sentence. We don't change the word ball. It's still just ball, okay? But, see this word I right here? I hit the ball. When it's a subject, it's I, but we do change the word I when I becomes the object. If I said, someone hit me, notice that I has now become me, okay? If I said, I went over the fence, I'm the subject, it's I. But if I said, the ball hit me, now I'm the object, so it becomes me, okay? So in Greek, nouns, change based upon whether they're the subject or the object, okay? So for example, just as I becomes me, ball, but ball doesn't change, in Greek, God as a subject is going to look a little bit different than God as an object, okay? Now, God here is not a direct object, but God here is the object of a preposition, because this is the phrase the word was with God, okay? With is a preposition. Pros is the word for with that's used in this verse, okay? So because God here is the object of a preposition, it needs to become theon, not theos, 
which would be when it's the subject, such as God was the Word or the Word was God, where it is a predicate nominative or it is nominative because it's the subject, now it needs to become theon because it's an object of a preposition. So it's in the accusative case, okay? So when a word is being used as the subject in Greek, it's a nominative case. If it's a predicate nominative, as it is right here in the, in the phrase, the word was God, if it's a predicate nominative, it's again in nominative case. Subject, nominative case. But when it's an object, such as a direct object, or the object of certain prepositions, of which pros is one, then it's going to be in the accusative case. So, theos becomes theon. Okay? And everything else in this verse is pretty straightforward, right? I mean, that's probably the only thing that would kind of throw you for a little bit of a loop when you first look at this verse. Everything else is, is pretty straightforward. It's pretty basic. So let's go through it one more time. And are he in ologos. Que ologos in pros ton theon. Que theos in ologos. 